I'm going to read the next chapter of the BFG. And we are now on chapter 16, Mixing the Dream. And I've got two helpers with me today. I've got my daughter, Emily, who you met last week. And then I've also got my son, Toby. Say hello, guys. Hello. And we thought for a bit of a giggle, we would try and read the story and would each take a different part. So, Emily, who are you going to be? Sophie. And Tobes? I'm going to be the BFG. Okay, so bear with us in case we have a bit of a giggle as we go along. I'm going to be the narrator. And if you do have your copy of the BFG, then follow along with us. It was dark now. The night had already begun. The BFG, with Sophie sitting on his hand, hurried into the cave and put on those brilliant blinding lights that seemed to come from nowhere. He placed Sophie on the table. Stay there, please, he said. And no ch chittering. I is really needing to listen to silence when I is mixing such a naughty, plexicated dream as this. He hurried away from her. He got out an enormous empty glass that was the size of a washing machine. He clutched it to his chest and hurried to wash the shelves on which stood the thousands and thousands of smaller jars containing the captured dreams. Dreams about giants, he muttered to himself as he searched the labels. The, gu the giants is guzzling human beings. No, not, not that one, nor that one. Here's one and here's another. He grabbed the jars and unscrewed the tops. He tipped the dreams into the enormous jar he was clutching. And as each one went in, Sophie caught a glimpse of a small sea green blob tumbling from one jar into the other. The BFG hurried towards another shelf. Now, he muttered. I is wanting dreams about giggle houses for girls and boggle boxes for boys. He was becoming very tense now. Sophie could almost see the excitement bubbling inside him as he scurried back and forth among his beloved jars. There must have been 50,000 dreams altogether up there on the shelves, but he seemed to know almost exactly where everyone, sorry, he seemed to know almost exactly where every one of them was. Dreams about a little girl. He muttered. And dreams about me, about the BFG. Come on, hurry up. Come on, hurry up. Get on with it. Now, where in the wonky world is I keeping those? And so it went on. In about half an hour, the BFG had found all the dreams he wanted and had tipped them into one huge jar. He put the jar on the table. Sophie sat watching him but said nothing. Inside the big jar, lying on the bottom of it, she could clearly see about 50 of those oval sea green jellyish shapes, all pulsing gently in and out, some lying on top of others, but each one still a quite separate individual dream. Now we is mixing them, the BFG announced. He went to the cupboard where he kept his bottle of frog scottle, and from it he took out a gigantic egg beater. It was one of those that has a handle which you turn and down below there was a lot of overlapping blades that go whizzing around. He inserted the bottom end of his contraption into the big jar where the dreams were lying. Watch, he said. He started turning the handle very fast. Flashes of green and blue exploded inside the jar. The dreams were being whisked into a sea green froth. Poor thing, Sophie cried. They is not feeling it, the BFG said as he turned the handle. Dreams is not like human beings or animals. They has no brains. They is made of Zozzy's mouse. After about a minute, the BFG stopped whisking. The whole bottle was now full to the brim with large bubbles. They were almost exactly like the bubbles we ourselves blow from soapy water except that these had even brighter and more beautiful colours swimming on their surfaces. Keep watching, the BFG said. Quite slowly, the topmost bubble rose up through the neck of the jar and floated away. A second one followed, then a third and a fourth. Soon the cave was filled with hundreds of beautifully coloured bubbles, all drifting gently through the air. It was truly a wonderful sight. As Sophie watched them, they all started floating towards the cave entrance. 
it, which was still open. They're going out, Sophie whispered. Of course, the BFG said. Where to? Those is all tiny room bits that I isn't using, the BFG said. They is going back to my misty country to join up with proper dreams. It's still a bit beyond me, Sophie said. Dreams is full of mystery and magic, the BFG said. Do not try to understand them. Look in the big bottle and you will now see the dream you is wanting for the cream queen. Sophie turned and stared into the great jar. On the bottom of it, something was thrashing around wildly, bouncing up and down and flinging itself against the walls of the jar. Good heavens, she cried. That, is that it? That's it, the BFG said proudly. But it's horrible, Sophie cried. If she's, no, it's jumping about. It wants to get out. That's because it. If she's dreaming about giants guzzling up. Sorry, Toby. That's because. That's because it's a trouble humper. The BFG said. It's a nightmare. Oh, but I don't want you to give the queen a nightmare. Sophie cried. If she is dreaming about giants guzzling up little boys and girls, then what? It, what is she expecting it to be, except a nightmare? The BFG said. Oh no! Sophie cried. Oh yes! The BFG said. A dream where you seeing little children being eaten is about the most frightsome, trouble humping dream you can get. It's a kicky bog thumper. It's a whoppy grob swiveller. It is all of the riddled into one. It is, it's a bad dream. I blew a sh it's, it is, it is as bad as the dream I blew into the flesh lumper this afternoon. It is worse. Sophie stared down at the fearful nightmare dream that was still thrashing away in the huge glass jar. It was much larger than the others. It was about the size and shape of all, shall we say a turkey's egg? It was jellyish. It had tinges of bright scarlet deep inside it. There was something terrible about the way it was throwing, throwing itself against the sides of the jar. I don't want to give the Queen a nightmare, Sophie said. I is thinking, the BFG said, that your Queen will be happy to have a nightmare if having a nightmare is going to save a lot of human beings from being gobbled up by filthsome giants. Is I right or is I left? I suppose you're right, Sophie said. It's got to be done. She will soon be getting over it, the BFG said. How do you put all the other important things into it? Sophie asked. When I was blowing that dream into the Queen's bedroom, the BFG said, she will be dreaming every single thing a ling, -ling. You is asking me to make her dream. About me sitting on the window, so that part is very strong. And about a big friendly giant. I was putting a nice long gobbit about him. <laughs> the BFG said. As he spoke, he picked up one of his smaller jars and very quickly tipped the struggling, thrashing troggle hunter out of the large jar into the small one. Then he screwed the lid tightly onto the small jar. That, that's it, he announced. We is ready now. We is ready now. He fetched his suitcase and put the small jar into it. Why bother to take a great, great big suitcase when you've only got one jar? So he said. said. You could put the jar in your pocket. The BFG looked down at her and smiled. My goggles, he said, taking the jar out of the suitcase. Your head is not quite so full of grime slug after all. I can see you was not born last week. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you, kind sir. Sophie said, making a little curtsy from the tabletop. Is you ready to leave? The BFG asked. I'm ready, Sophie cried. Her heart was beginning to thump at the thought of what they were about to do. It really was a wild and crazy thing. Perhaps they would both be thrown into prison. The BFG was putting on his great black cloak. He tucked the jar into a pocket in his cloak. He picked up his long trumpet-like dream blur. Then he turned and looked at Sophie, who was still on the tabletop. The dream bottle is in my pocket, he said. Is you going to sit sit in there with the sit in there with it during the travel? Never cried Sophie. I refuse to sit next to that beast to that beastly thing. Sophie look oh. <laughs> then, then where is you going to sit? The BFG asked her. Sophie looked him over for a few minutes. Then she said If you would be kind enough to swivel one of your big ears Love you, big ears. So that it is it lying flat like a dish. That would make a very co- cozy place for me to sit. By gumbo, that is a squawkling good idea. The BFG slowed. <laughs> Slowly, he swivelled his huge right ear until it was like a great shell facing the heavens. He lifted Sophie up and placed her into it. The ear itself, which was about the size of a large tea tray, was full of the same channels and crinkles as a human ear. It was extremely comfortable. I hope... I hope I don't fall down your ear hole. Sophie said, edging away from the large hole just beside her. Be very careful not to do that, the BFG said. You would be giving me a cronking ear hole. (laughs) The nice thing about being there was that she could whisper directly into his ear. Use tickling me, the BFG said. Please do not jiggle about. I'll try not to, Sophie, what Sophie said. Sir. Are we ready? Are we? Are we? Are we? <laughs> yelled the BFG. Don't do that. I didn't do anything, Sophie, Sophie said. said. <laughs> you is talking too loud. You was forgetting that I is hearing every little thing a ling 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 fifty times louder <laughs> than usual. And there is you shouting away right inside my ear. <laughs> oh gosh. Sophie murmured. I forgot that. Your voice is sounding like <laughs> thunder and trumpets. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sophie whispered. No. Is that better? Um, I can't see. <laughs> no, cried the BFG. It sounds, it sounds as though you is shoot, shooting <laughs> off a blunderbuss. Then how can I talk to you? Sophie whispered. Don't, cried the poor BFG. Please don't. Each word is like, is dropping buzz bombs into my ear hole. <laughs> Sophie tried speaking right under her breath. Is this better? She said. She spoke so softly she couldn't even hear her own voice. That's better, the BFG said. Now I is hearing you very nicely. What is that you were trying to say just now? I was trying to say, are we ready? We We is off, cried the BFG, heading for the cave entrance. We is going off to meet Her Majesty the Queen. Outside the cave, he rolled the large round stone back into place and set off at a tremendous gallop. Thanks, Willow class, for listening. That was quite funny. Uh, If you've got enough people in your house, you could give that a go and try and each take a roll Um, because it is a bit of a giggle, really. Right, see you later, Willow class. Don't want to say hello, Dad.